Steve, welcome back. This is the Information Security Forum podcast, and in today's conversation, we're going to tackle the world of mobile applications, or mobile apps as they're more commonly referred to. And we're going to talk about the relationship between business, the consumer, and security. Increasingly, organizations are developing and rolling out mobile apps as part of their customer service offerings. The challenge they must face is how to make the app secure while not compromising ease of access. As consumers, we're aware of how reliant we've become on mobile apps in our day-to-day personal and business lives. I have so many apps on my phone. Some were pre-installed when I set up my phone. Many are from my preferred retailers. Others offer me the comfort of knowing that I can manage my whole life, my money, my health, my home utilities, my social life, all at the click of a button. But how can I really know what in the app is secure and what the app developer is doing with my information? I'm interested to hear your perspective on this, Steve, so let's get to it. Let's look first at how businesses are using apps. We've established that mobile app development has increased exponentially, with 47 billion more apps downloaded in 2017 than 2016. That's an astonishing number. How have businesses benefited from the use of apps? Yeah, I think that uh, apps certainly have become the way to go. And uh, for a while now, I've been talking about the big shift that we've seen in um, in the world of IT, you know, control being in the hands of the user, the main way in which we access information being through our smartphones or our uh, tablets. And inevitably, that means via an app. And that is a situation that is going to continue uh, I think that businesses all around the world have, have established that there is benefit in their consumers, their customers, or indeed their employees being able to access information very quickly uh, via an app that sits on a device that is with them all the time, and that increasingly is is the smartphone. How have they benefited? Well, they've benefited in a number of different ways. Uh, of course, some people may not realize that We have this thing called GPS that operates across some of the devices that provide all sorts of information from a geolocation standpoint. Apps themselves can access no end of different elements of what is going on on your smartphone or tablet or indeed what it is that you happen to be accessing. And so this wealth of information that is being gathered and sent back to the originator of the app, if you like, is also increasing at an exponential rate. Why? Because there is value in that data, in that information. Mm -hmm. And that raises a number of different uh, issues, I think. So yes, of course, there are benefits, because if we think about it, if you know where I happen to be, and say, for instance, I'm using a Starbucks app, uh, and I happen to be in the proximity of a particular Starbucks store, uh, you would know that from, from the app developer point of view, from a Starbucks point of view. You'd be able then to send me a message, for instance, that says, did you know that we've got a particular offer that's ongoing at the moment in a particular store that is, say, 50 yards away from where you happen to be? And so you can attract me in there. Is there anything wrong with that? Probably not. Uh, you know, if I'm a big fan of Starbucks or whoever it happens to be, that may be seen as being a benefit to me as a consumer. Mm-hmm. It's also, of course, a benefit to the organization using the app. So that's just a very simple way of doing it. Hotels will very readily use apps to try to draw you in to make direct bookings. Why? Because that cuts out the middleman. Mm -hmm. It means they don't have to pay any incremental fees to, uh, to third parties. And they're also capturing your information and their understanding where you happen to be. There's no question there is significant benefit to an organization in using an app because of the information Mm -hmm. that it can access. But from the individual standpoint, we also need to be a little bit more aware, I think, of what some of these apps can actually do and why they're asking for all of this information. So, you know, the the numbers that you quoted are quite startling. You know, 47 billion more apps downloaded, and that's incremental. So it isn't just a total number, it is incremental. Uh, Some other research from an enterprise standpoint from Ponemon last year that also says, you know, when they ask security people, how confident they are that they know how all the different apps are being used at work, for instance. So from an enterprise security standpoint, well, 63% of them were not confident at all. They Mm. knew how that was being used. So what we've potentially got here is a large number of very convenient uh, ways of accessing data, both to a user and from the user. And yet something that is also raising concerns around how do we then wrap a security blanket around that? How do we stay safe in the app world? And those are some of the real questions, I think, that that individuals will 
certainly need to address mm-hmm. uh, as we uh, as we go forward. I like that you just gave yourself a, a new nickname too. I think I'm going to refer to you as Security Blanket from now on. <laughs> Do you like it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this can be viewed as positive by a business. What are some of the security challenges associated with that rapid development and deployment of apps? And how can organizations better secure mobile apps? Is it fair to put the entire responsibility for security solely in the hands of the app developer? Yeah, it's it's a tricky question. This and it's one that actually at the ISF we've uh, really tried to deal with over a number of years. I think that we, if you look at it from the app developer standpoint, there is an immense amount of pressure to get your app out there in the market as quickly as possible. Mm. Does that mean that you cut corners? Not necessarily, but does it mean that you will streamline? Of, of course, because the idea is you will put the app out there and then you will refine mm-hmm. based on user feedback, consumer use, and, and and so on. Inevitably, and unfortunately in this particular area, security tends to, not in all cases, but in a lot of cases, security tends to lag. Hmm. Why? Because nobody really, still today, downloads an app and before doing so says, hang on a minute, how secure is this app? Yeah. There is an assumption that, that we make. Or, for instance, if you're using it from a preferred retailer... How hard can it be? What is the need for security? And I'm only going to be looking at, you know, online shopping. Well, of course, the reality is that, yes, you are. That's your starting point. But then you see something you want to buy, and that's when you then upload your mm-hmm. uh, your personal information. So security in the app world is something I think that, that is a tricky one. If the responsibility isn't going to lie in the hands of the app developer, where is it going to lie? And I think if we step into the enterprise world, then certainly there are things that businesses can do to try to increase the level of awareness of the need for security with, when we use apps, uh, but also to make sure that the apps that are being downloaded onto corporate devices or indeed even personal devices that are being used to access corporate systems do follow a certain number of key steps and guidelines to make them a little bit more secure. And you know, it's probably worth looking at some of the challenges in that space. At the ISF, we've got a particular piece of work that's, that's going to be released in the very near future that looks at this whole area. It's produced by one of our uh, analysts, chap called Mark Sowerby, who particularly studies this area and is something of an expert in this particular field. And you know, some of the security challenges that we've come across here tend to be things like unauthorized procurement. So I don't differentiate as a user between my corporate smartphone and perhaps my home device. I would want to see the same apps on Mm -hmm. on both because it's convenient. Mm -hmm. Because of course, in the workplace, we don't differentiate anymore between what we do for ourselves and for the business. And some ways say that's that's wrong, but you know, we have to be realistic. Right. That that's the way that it is. So unauthorized procurement is a big challenge for apps. I think that the organizations uh, and enterprises can provide guidance around that. So only download apps from reliable sources. The app store if you happen to be an Apple guy or at least a known source. One of the pieces of guidance that I always tend to give on this, uh, if you don't work in a secure store environment, is don't download an app that somebody else that you know hasn't already downloaded. So let somebody else make the mistake first. (laughs) The fall guy. (laughs) Exactly. And then you can follow on behind. One of the other uh, challenges in here, of course, is that you could be installing potentially harmful apps on your corporate device. So they may be in conflict with some of the other ways in which your corporate device is is, uh, is handling data and, and sharing information. So it's quite important, again, from a security standpoint, from an IT department standpoint, to provide guidance to users about not what they can and can't do, because we know that prohibition doesn't work. Mm-hmm. It, it, it never has done. But helpful suggestions and explaining reasons why do. So transparency is, is pretty key in, in all of this. I think it's also about user education. It's about reinforcing some of the messages about, you know, updates, making sure that the app is always up to date, making sure the operating system is always up to date Mm -hmm. because security moves very, very quickly. Malware comes out very, very rapidly. Um, You always want to make sure that uh, your devices are fully up to to speed. And I think it's also particularly important as we go forward and we approach things like uh, GDPR that users understand how to erase information and erase apps effectively. Just because you've deleted it off the device doesn't necessarily mean that it's disappeared. Hmm. Uh, And so again, I think there is a very strong role for security and IT in terms of dealing with some of these things. 
And when I first started talking about these these sorts of things a number of years ago now, people always used to look at me and say, well, you know, how hard can it be? We can all use a tablet. We can all use a smartphone. Do we really need to be educated and trained in how to do it? Unfortunately, the answer is yes, we do. Because things that look very, very easy, and let's not forget, you know, the whole essence of an app is it makes life simple, doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy for every consumer to be able to use and, and adapt to. So I think there is a very strong role for um, enterprise security in terms of educating constantly users around this sort of thing. So really, security doesn't solely lie in the hands of the app developer. There is an expectation that apps developers will be responsible, and the vast majority are, of course. But it goes much further beyond that. It is about individuals taking a, a role um, it's about enterprise security, assuming responsibility for sharing information, and about this continual need for uh, for education as well in this particular environment. So it's a jointly held responsibility, if I could put it that way. Hmm. So let's take a look at the app industry from the consumer point of view. What's happening to consumer data harvested through mobile apps, and how will the manipulation or use of the data impact the consumer? I think that, uh, again, you know, the thing about apps in in the consumer world is that we download them at will. Impulsively. Impulsively, Mm -hmm. absolutely. And, and, you know, (laughs) there's nothing wrong with that. But I think that it's always very useful to just take stock from time to time as to the the number of apps that you've got actually running on your your phone. You know, one of the indicators uh, in this particular place is if your phone is starting to run a little bit more slowly or it's starting to eat up battery – it probably means you've got some things going on on there that you weren't aware of. And so that that sort of stock take or review of what's been going on there is uh, certainly uh, something I think that I would advise everybody to do and just clean out some of the uh, the things that you're no longer using. I think one of the other uh, things that's very important in this uh, particular area from a consumer standpoint is to really understand what data the apps are accessing. Mm-hmm. And you can check that out very easily on your smartphone. You just need to go into the settings and uh, and, and take a look at what's what's going on there. Um, Why am I saying this? Well, apps work in two ways. Certainly they provide you or us as consumers with information, but they also suck back all of the information and the activity that you're carrying out on your particular phone or device. What does that actually mean? Well, it it does mean that that information could be shared. Uh, It does mean, for instance, that it potentially could work against you. Um, So incorrect data, social profiling, you know, all of these things can have both positive and negative impacts. You know, it might mean that you get a better credit rating, for instance, based on some of the things that uh, you've been doing. It could also mean that you don't. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I think that uh, it's very important for us to really understand what information is being potentially sucked out by the apps, what information we're perhaps unwittingly sharing, and to, uh, to really determine those apps that we're quite happy and comfortable to, to have share information uh, and those that we're not. And if you've stopped using a particular app from a consumer standpoint, then my advice is to, to delete it and also to regularly review which apps are accessing which elements of your data. You know, do they really need to be accessing it all of the time mm-hmm. or only when you're using the app? So um, I think those are, those are sort of the key things from a consumer standpoint. But But inevitably, you know, the point I would make as well is that it's becoming increasingly more difficult for us to differentiate between what goes on in the consumer world and the business world. Mm-hmm. And and so we really do have to understand that there is this blending. And I, I think it's often a, a mistake for us to try to view things in, in isolation. Uh, and of course, you know, I come back to this uh, position that I, I've taken for, for quite some while, which is that the enterprise also has a role to play in, in uh, really helping consumers to understand what it is that uh, they should be doing to... Uh, maintain security and integrity of information across apps, smartphones, tablets, and the different ways in which we access personal information and personal websites, devices, apps, and so on, and also then the enterprise-based side of things too. Can we, the consumers, do anything to restrict the amount of data we're sharing it with third parties? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a whole range of different things that you can do. I mean, there are you, you can look at browser settings, for instance. You can use ad blocking software. Uh, you can establish which uh, elements of, of the apps that you've got downloaded are actually sharing information, and you can uh, you can stop that. 
you can, again, use you know virtual private networks as opposed to going in over public networks. So a variety of different things that you can actually do. It's all about knowing that you can do that and then about just taking the time to, to figure out how to implement some of these controls. Uh, but I think that it's well worth doing. Yeah. My final question is, how do you see the challenge of mobile app development and consumer privacy playing out in the future? Yeah, I, I think that um, we're, we're not going to stop using apps. You know, that's that's the first thing to say. We will see that continue. We will see an increase as well in the use of uh, apps, um, both in development of them and, and the general acceptance of the way in which we uh, conduct business uh, around them. Consumer privacy and, and how does that how is that affected by it? Well, I think generally we're going through a stage in the development of personal usage of, of technology where privacy and the rights of the individual to own personal data and control the use of personal data is a very hot topic. Mm -hmm. People are becoming very much more aware than, than they ever were. And so I think that it's going to be interesting to see how that particularly pans out. My expectation is that we will see some of that requirement for more control reflected back into the way in which new mobile apps are being developed. I, I do expect to see very much more uh, requests for, for authorization to access information and use mm -hmm. information mm -hmm. than perhaps we see with some apps today. Uh, and I think that uh, users will generally become a little bit more aware of what they can and cannot do with their devices to control the amount of personal information that is being shared mm -hmm. across their use of, of apps. I think we're at the beginning of that. I think things like uh, Facebook and some of the other um, instances that we've seen of, of late are contributing to raising that level of awareness. And that's something that I think that will continue. Sounds like a very positive change. I think so. Yeah. That's great. Well, this has been a great discussion, as all of our conversations are. And you've provided interesting insights into how organizations can serve the business need for apps in a secure manner while providing their teams and consumers with a similar level of functionality and ease of use that we're all getting accustomed to in our personal lives, but with the added consideration of data privacy. I think it's fair to say that for now, the priority is still about performance over security, unfortunately, but with the GDPR emphasis on protecting personal data, the focus may well start to shift, which would be of benefit to everybody. To find out more, visit securityforum.org. <laughs>